today that would just completely help so much with your stress and that she was a big advocate for one of those things were before you go to bed at night, which I've normally done this before I even heard her talk about it, but before you go to bed at night, go ahead and get the clothes you're going to wear the next day, prepare them, hang them up, you know, where you're going to change clothes at the next morning. That way you don't have to wake up and make that big of a decision first thing in the morning. And she makes jokes about it because because when you think about it, it's not that big of a deal. Now, me, if you know, Monday through Thursday, I know when I wake up exactly what I'm putting on. I'm putting on that uniform and I gotta go to work. So that kind of eliminates that for me on that aspect, but still and yet she's talking, she was touching on something that makes a lot of sense. She's talking about having a plan. You know, I mentioned that World War II battlefield a while ago. And one thing about those battlefield or many military battle, they, despite what the movies may show, people don't just show up with military armament and just see what happens. They show up with a well planned out, everything is thought of, every aspect of everything, what what the enemy might do, what they're probably going to do. What's that? What, and they weigh everything out. They show up with a highly detailed plan, and they put it in practice on that battlefield. Now, I've told y'all before, I like to play chess, but I can't play against somebody that really knows how to play because I won't last five minutes. If that, two minutes or less in some instances, I know how the pieces move, but I haven't really studied it out enough to really put together a good strategy with what I'm working with to have a plan. So because I'm just going in there, I'm, ah, this piece, I, that feels good, let me move that one. They're sitting across the table with someone that knows what they're doing with a plan already in play in their mind. Now, I will admit, yeah, sometimes it throws them for a loop because my moves will just be so far out of left field and make absolutely no sense at all that they didn't see them coming. But because of their knowledge of what, the, what they're playing, they're able to adapt and they change. And their plan may form in something different, but still and yet they have a plan that they're working out. Uh, I'm going to be in the book of Nehemiah chapter 2 if y'all want to go ahead and go there. Uh, and, and things in planning, I've sat in business meetings before when we when the first of the month we would have to go in for the meeting and and the big one the one of the topic that you knew they were going to go over at the time where they were going to show how much money the company made like you know September September first week of September we would go in for our our business meeting and they would say okay this is September 2020. This is how much money we made September of 2019. And they would sometimes say, we done really good that month. Sometimes they would say, I don't know what happened to y'all. Y'all slacked off. We don't know how we did this. But they would always, no matter what the outcome was, oh, we had a really good month, but we really feel like we can do better. We can do more this month than we did this time last year. And really, they were putting a goal before all of us that work for them, and we're saying, this is what we are expecting. This is our plan. We need to see this happen. And then they figure out ways, they think of ways, to, and any business has to do this that's worth their salt, or they won't continue to be in business. They have to come up with ways for marketing. They have to come up with advertising. They may have to add to their their business, maybe some of their services as the business grows would continue to change or add and adapt to the world around them. You look today right now at how many businesses have had to find a way to go contact free. You know, I was listening to, you know, you know, fast restaurants are doing it. Restaurants has never had a delivery service ever. They have delivery services now because, they, hey, people don't want to get out to eat. and People don't want to, you know, they're a little different than they were a few months ago. I, I will say that. But there's still a lot of people that just die getting out and about just still isn't quite what they're ready for. So they'd rather have it brought straight to the door. 
But I've heard advertisements for, for different things. So, I mean, I think one was a storage building advertisement. And they were like, look, we'll do a contact free. You won't have to touch and come with near anybody if you don't want to. And it's just the way, and you think, you know, five years ago, we would have never thought we would have ever heard of businesses doing this. But in order for a business to survive through this COVID, kind of like with the little thing through tonight, just hold on, had to change how they did things so that they'll make it through to the other side. So they had to regroup. They had to make a plan. Now, Nehemiah, I know, is a very familiar story. You know, Nehemiah chapter 1, in chapter 2, it talks about uh, Nehemiah trying to he's getting permission from the king to go back home and, and rebuild the wall. And luckily, just like so many times in the Bible, when, when God's ready to do a work and he's ready to see some things change for his people, he gives someone favor in the eyes of who's over them, their enemy or their captive uh, you people that's holding them. And, and it happens here the same way. The king has like a soft spot in his heart for Nehemiah. And he lets everything happen. And it's kind of cool the way it goes if you want to read that chapter. But going into chapter 2, Nehemiah's already there. And in verse 17, he's calling to, to the people to begin rebuilding the wall. So Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he, spake, he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they straightened, strengthened their hands for this good work. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite and Geshem the Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? They haven't even much less got their plan put together yet, and they're already seeing opposition. You know, there were some months in those business meetings where the boss would tell us how great we had done that month the year before, and it was just to, even they would say, boy, it was just an awesome month. We don't really know how we done it, but we just done it. Sales was just through the roof, and we really need to try to top that this year. And we would walk out of those meetings talking amongst ourselves about how this is just, it's impossible. They got a lucky shot last year. They got this big contract that fell, came through and kind of was a shot in the arm. And it, it just, it really gave it the, the pickup that it needed. And, you know, it, that, that's not going to happen this month. Lo and behold, we roll around to the first of the next month for the next business meeting, and they would tell us that we did it. We surpassed what was made the year before. Now, in terms of money in a business, that is a wonderful thing. Boss man's happy when he sees that he's making more money this year than he was last year, and that means we all still get paychecks for a little while longer. So see, it kind of went uphill, but we also, at the same time, were working in a plan that was being laid out before us. Now, in a business setting, you don't really worry too much about anybody telling you that it can't happen or that this, that, the other. But they're wanting to go and build this wall, and it's already happening. The opposition is beginning to kind of mumble and grumble and just kind of, you know, what are you trying to do? You're going to rebel against the king? You know, you're going to go against him? You told him you weren't going to do that, so why are you doing this? But then answered I them and said it to them, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Kind of like my saying I like to you, they let him know you don't have a dog in this fight. You absolutely had nothing to say, but God, he will prosper us. We're going to see this come to pass. Well, if you, if you go through the next couple of chapters, they begin building on the wall. 
Go over to chapter 4, start with verse 1. It says, But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that he we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. Almost kind of in an instance where I kind of wonder why did it matter so much to him? Why did it bother Sanballat that they were building this wall? Have you ever seen someone try to do something different and for whatever reason it just made someone else mad? You know, when you hear different people talking about how when they first came to the Lord, how their running buddies that they had beforehand just all of a sudden get so mad at them because they won't, you won't go run with them anymore. Uh -huh. Well, then you're just the two, goody two-shoes. You're this, you're that. You, you, you've found religion, and now you, you're just too good for anybody because you won't go get drunk anymore. You won't go get high anymore. You just got all these new group of friends that you're hanging around in or two. Or, or the one I like, you know, I didn't like it, but the one that my dad heard a lot of times from different people was, why do y'all have to go to church so much? There ain't but just a handful of y'all there. Why do y'all have to go so much? Well, it wasn't that we had to go. It was that we got to go. That's right. We, there was still something there. There was something moving at that time, and it was an exciting time. And even still, it was greater than that. It was a commitment. It was a plan being worked out. Well, he's mocking the Jews. We've we been mocked before. We're going to be mocked later down the road. We're probably being mocked right now because, you know, we could be sitting at home taking it easy, but here we are meeting at service 7.30 on a Wednesday night. You know, and I was thinking, I told Sister Sheena, I got home, I, I got home just a little later than normal, and we had to help get one of the kids home from school, and that wasn't that no problem at all. But when we were on our way back home, I said, you know, stuff like this don't ever happen unless it's a church night. We got to go, we got to go, we got to go, you know. But still, and yet, knowing that that's just how life is sometimes, it would have been nice maybe to just say, well, we were just too busy, let's just stay at home tonight. But this is a plan being worked about. Well, verse 2 says that he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria. You know, kind of interesting now, he's talking to an army. And said, what do these feeble Jews, will they fortify themselves? You know, what are they doing? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said... Even that which they build, if a fox go up, it shall even break down their stone wall. It ain't going to mean nothing. You got a bunch of slaves out there building a wall. They don't know what they're doing. They're going to slap together a few pieces of lumber and maybe some stone, and it's going to just be leaning up on its own weight. And if something as small as a fox bumps onto it, it's going to fall over. You know, we get a good, you know, <laughs> Good earth shake sometimes. It's just going to fall. It ain't going to amount to nothing. Sometimes we hear the work that we're trying to do for God isn't going to amount for nothing. As soon as the devil stomps his foot at them, they're going to tuck tail and run. It ain't going to make no big deal to nobody. They're not going to be anything. But verse 4 says, Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall. We kept on anyway. We held on. We didn't stop from our plan just because things had gotten a little rocky, just because things might have been said that it was going to be impossible. We worked anyway. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Yes. I say all the time, the biggest thing that you have to do is you have to make your mind up. Yep. It can't be made up. This is one thing. Yes, the people had a mind to work. If we have the mind to work and we still continue to bind together as uh -huh. we have, 
and we continue to move forward and allow God to work and we see his kingdom being added to here on this earth, yes, we can still get something done. God can still do a mighty work here. I believe that he can. Mount Vernon, to me, I'll be honest with you, I don't mean to offend anybody who may be watching this video on YouTube or anywhere else it might be, but... Mount Vernon belongs to Mount Vernon Pentecostal Church. Come on. Come on. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That liberty is freedom. And God is working something out. There's been some shaking. There's been some things changing. Yeah, it might be just because someone might say, well, it's just because of the virus. Everybody's got their mind on God. But it's going to be just like 9 11. It's just going to be sooner, a day or two after it's all over with. All these people are promising to come back to church as soon as everything levels back out. But it ain't going to happen. It's going to be just like 9-11. They're going to hit the snooze button and they're going to go right back to what they were doing. The fox is going to knock down the wall. The, the bickering, the negativity, all that is already beginning to form and build and come against. But they said in verse 6, so built we the wall. But it came to pass. They had the mind to work, but it still came to pass that when Sambalat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashadites and all them other people heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, they were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. When a movement begins to take place, when building begins to happen, the devil begins to fight. Yep. The plan that was put place in the presence of God to build, to do for good, to do something for him, the plan when that takes place, the devil begins concocting his own plan to combat it, to go against, and to hinder it. But nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Nope. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God. We put our faith in God and set a watch against them day and night. Yes. People want to wonder, why is all you Bible thumpers always hollering about Second Amendment rights? Y'all supposed to be Christians. Y'all supposed to be holy people. Why are y'all worried about having guns anyway? Because sometimes there comes situations, set a watch against them, made our prayer unto God, but set a watch. They understood, hey, look, we're doing the work. We're depending on God. Well, God's going to... Already at the beginning of the first few verses that we read, they even said, you know, God's going to make this work. God's going to help us out. I'm going to go back and see if I can find it so I can say it again. And I probably won't be able to. Blessing, Jesus. Blessing, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The God of heaven, he will prosper us was the exact words that he said. I told you when I try to quote stuff, I lose it. He will prosper us. We're doing this for a reason. It's the work of God. Nehemiah knew he was where he needed to be or the king would have never felt you know, okay enough with giving him permission. And not only giving him permission, but y'all, if y'all read that story again, the king set Nehemiah up in a way to get some help in what he was doing. They were needing material for building. Some things don't just appear. Now, I know, you know, if you ever watched that movie, Evan Almighty, when God comes down to tell the Evan, you know, the politician, to build an ark, and all the material just begin, lumber begins to mysteriously get dropped off in front of his house. That's great for a movie. That's kind of comical in the way that they told it. But if in the original storytelling of that, when Noah was told to build the ark, it didn't just show up. They had to go harvest it. That's right. They had to go get that lumber. Now, what it was, I don't know they call it locust wood, but now what it was, what he had was what he needed to get the job done. Nehemiah was needing some things to get this job done. There was a, there was a product. They were needing the materials. And God made the way for them to get it from the king's forest. 
is where the trees were cut down to make the wood that they needed to build this wall. They didn't just go out and find something here and there and scrap here and there. They went out and they got trees they cut down out of the king's forest for lumber to build the wall the right way. There was planning going on. There were measurements being taken. There was probably ground they were having to level off and set things in place and in order for getting things just right so that that wall wouldn't fall if a fox jumped up on top of it so that it would stand. God sometimes has to work with us the same way that they work with that wall. Even though people around us are saying it's impossible, God can't do anything with us, and what God's having to do is just break us down to the mold and get down to the dirt and level everything right back out and get everything just as it's supposed to be and building us back the right way because we've messed ourselves up so much. We've took spiritual sledgehammers to our own walls and we've beat holes in them and we've knocked studs out and we've just destroyed more than anybody could ever try to put back together here on this earth. But we serve a God that's got a healing hand that can put anything back together. Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall. If anybody had ever called on God to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, Humpty Dumpty would have been put back together again. When we're looking at situations in our life and there are times when we think, oh, good gracious, this is going to be impossible. If you have a mind to see it come probably true, God can do a work. They had a mind to work to see this impossible task take place. You know, when you want to have something built at your home or anywhere like that, if you're smart, if you don't know how to do what it, the job entails, you go find someone who does. You hire them to do it. You want that train, you want that experienced labor to come in and work. Well, this looked like a bunch of, like I said a while ago, just a bunch of slaves out there slapping a bunch of stuff together. But it was much more than that. It was a plan that they were doing. And even as it began to face the opposition and things, and now it sounds like armies is going to come down and before them. And the next few chapters, if you read, that's, it just goes on and on about more opposition, more opposition. But in verse 6, chapter 15, I want to read it. I'm going to give out just a second to get there because it's the good one. Six and fifteen. So the wall was finished. Amen. Because the people had a mind to work. Thank you, Jesus. In the twenty and fifth day of the month Elul, in fifty and two days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, all the ones that's been opposing it, all the ones that's been talking trash, threatening to come fight against us with armies, when they heard about it. And all the heathen that were about us saw these things. They were much cast down in their own eyes. For they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. They knew they couldn't deny who that came from. How that wall got built was because of the God that they serve. The same ones that look at us and say negative things. The same ones that try to come against us when we begin. The same ones that the devil seeks on us when we begin to try to hit another level. That's the way I always use it. Some call it a breakthrough into their next realm. Some call it a plateau. I always call it, maybe it's the, you know, I grew up in the age of video games. I call it breakthrough to the next level. And when you get really dig your heels in and say, yep, I'm fixing to make a run. I've got the gumption. I've got the authority. I have the word of God in my hand. I'm going to get through to this next level in my walk with God. And that's exactly when the devil seeks his dogs on us. But when you go on through, when you hold on, when you make your mind up to push on through anyway, and you come into that next level, those that were coming against you, well, they even know, they're going to perceive that that work is from the hand of God himself. But what is deemed as impossible? Oh, science can talk about all kinds of things about this is impossible, that's impossible. You know, oil and water will not mix. It is just impossible. It will not happen. Doesn't matter how hard you try, what kind of different uh, levels or different measurements you try to mix it with, it does not matter. It's not going to happen. 
But that's science. But that's that's man stuff. That's what we're doing. Okay, yeah, there are certain things that even God just hey. But if God wanted oil and water to mix, he could do it. Come on. We have to be like a child and just kind of seem naive sometimes because we have just that much faith in God. That's right. Now, sometimes, as I said a while ago, there are bad things that happen and there's no coming back from them. Our lives change in an instant. And we pray. You know, Sister Sheena talked about the child whose pet passed away after they had prayed. I told y'all the other night, I had prayed for Daddy and I had my mind made up. There was absolutely no way, form, or fashion that there was nothing going to come out of his surgery than exactly what I prayed for. Childs pray for things all the time and when it doesn't come, a, the child he gets a very good kind of teaching moment when they say, well, why didn't God answer my prayer? We ask God to do those same questions as adults. Yes, we, we get our cage gets rattled. And we forget about the plan that we're working. I know I talked to here a while back and I was telling y'all about how someone was told they were in a bad situation and they called a military friend of theirs and they were like, look, what do I need to do in case this happens to me? And they said, the first thing that you do is you make a plan. You plan it, you plan it, you plan it. Because if it happens and you have that plan in place, you won't be as scared. You'll be able to think more clear because, oh, well, I thought about this beforehand. I knew this could possibly happen, so I set something up. Now, we do, I, hey, I know you can't always plan on everything, but we serve a God that knows everything, right. and anything that comes against us, we already know through his scripture that he says he won't let anything come against us more than we're able to take on on our own. And more than we're able to bear. You know, if it's something that was going to wipe you off the map, God wouldn't let it come. But if it came your way, you can stand up and look the storm in the eye and say, well, God, you've allowed this to come my way. So regardless of what happens, I know I'm going to be safe in it. That's right. I don't have to lose sleep over this. I don't have to be worried about this. I don't have to lose my appetite because I'm just so worried about this, God, because I know it's in your hands. It's only crossed my path for my betterment. It's going to make me good. You know, you're looking at how right, you know, you got football started up, high school, middle school, college, NFL, all this is starting back up, and, and they're all playing their games. Then I've said all this over and over again. They don't just show up at game time and start playing. They go through grueling practices. High schoolers go through two, sometimes they'll practice twice a day. So they'll go through camps. They'll go through all these different things, and they'll go through different drills for strength training, endurance training, so that when it comes game time, they've prepared for it. If they're caught up in a moment where they have the ball and they're running for the touchdown, They've got a plan for it, even though everybody on the other team is trying to stop them. And we get in pity parties sometimes when we feel like the whole world is against us. Well, even when we feel like the whole world is against us, don't forget, God still has a plan. Yes, he does. And God doesn't have to work within any of the boundaries of anybody that we think he has to follow. Philippians 3 and 14, Paul's talking, and he's a wonderful example of what I'm trying to get across tonight. All right, Paul was the one that held the coats of the people who stoned Stephen. He was condoning a martyr, a murder, killing this man. He's saying, hey, y'all, I hold your coats, y'all kidding. He went on from that to become one of the biggest enemies that the first church had. He was killing Christians. He was destroying families. He was torturing. He was just going around. Now, he thought he was doing the right thing. And then all of a sudden, when he was on the road to Damascus, he had an experience that he could not deny. He had something happen to him, and he was given a place of where to go. He was told there was going to be somebody to talk to him. He was given a plan. He uh -huh. wasn't told wandering around out here blind for a few uh -huh. days till somebody finds you. He was told, Saul was Saul. Why persecutest thou uh -huh. me? Why are you kicking against what I'm trying to get you to do? You're misunderstanding the message 
that I'm trying to send to you. God didn't say, so since you can't pay me attention and understand what I'm saying, I'm going to move on to the next one. He said, you go on down there. Someone's going to talk to you and give you a little bit more information about what you need to know. That's right. And then he became Paul, and he became the type of person that wrote things like this. Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God yes. in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Press toward the mark for the prize. Mm -hmm. Keep on keeping on. Yes. Press toward. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. Be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. One mind, one accord. Mind to work as a group but also at the same time as we work together as a group, we have to remember there are times when the group thing works. There are times when you got some help. We were playing now, we played a quick golf round last night after work. And we come up with the last one where we decided to, to, for time purposes, we would play as teams and and I went up and then we got to a point where I hit my ball and and and, and y'all it went about for me to that chair. I just, I'm still back like this. I looked at my teammate and I said, you have to dig us out of this, bud. <laughs> and I got out of his way and he made an absolutely beautiful shot and, and lined us up perfectly. You couldn't have done it any better if your name had been Tiger Woods. But he got us out. I tried, but what I did just fell short of the mark. So I looked at him and said, you have to carry us. Come on. But I had to try. Mm -hmm. We got to, even in the group thing, we got to try. We got to pull our weight. We have to press toward that calling. We have to make sure, press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And then let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. We have examples. Not only do we have examples, we are examples. So it falls all the way through. And don't ever think, oh, I can't be an example. I can't be God. I'm just too far gone. Paul's an example. Come on. Oh, it's impossible. Well, you would have thought his change would have been impossible. When Jesus got there in front of Lazarus' tomb, he was told it was impossible. Mm -hmm. He's been dead three days. By now, he stinks. Mm -hmm. Did it stop Jesus? No. Nope. Just like Nehemiah and them kept building on the wall, just like Paul was talking about right here, keep on pressing. Jesus called him by name. Lazarus come forth, and Lazarus come hopping out of that tomb. Come on. Get these things off of me. Thank you, Jesus. Because, hey, they done had him wrapped up tight. They done laid him to rest. It's the third day he's been in there. He stinks by now. Don't open that door. Don't open that tomb up. We don't want to smell him. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. It is impossible. Don't do it. Don't change. Don't try to get to that next level. Just give up on that church. It's impossible. It won't never do this. It won't ever do that. It won't never be what this one is. It won't never be what that one is. It's impossible. Jesus. I beg to differ. So I hope tonight I said something that made sense. I hope this was something that God wanted it to be. I'm going to hush now before we dismiss. I'm going to ask if anybody wants prayer.